Hey yo, my planet coaster friends, Johnny Five Alive here, and welcome back to another episode of Ride Spotlight. And in today's video, we have a robotic arm simulation ride experience. So stay tuned and let's check it out. All right, welcome back everyone. Hope you're all having an awesome day. If you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you end up enjoying the video, leave a like. Also come check us out on Discord as well as my Patreon. If you feel like supporting the show and enjoy all the content here, please do consider supporting it further as your support helps us pump out these videos. And with that out of the way, let's dive into today's creation, which is Raiders of the Lost Tomb Re-Motion Track Ride created by Dwan Alker, one of our Discord expert builders. And here they say, Hey Johnny, let the remotion put you right into the action on this adventure themed ride. Deep in the jungles lies the lost tomb of the sun. You found the entrance, however, the greedy Alfie Deep Pockets has caught up with you and your dig leader, Dr. Thomas. Alfie Deep Pockets is making you and Dr. Thomas take your dangerous journey through lava caves, past booby traps, and giant predators to find the gem of the sun for himself. Can you help Dr. Thomas stop Alfie Deep Pockets from? From taking what belongs to the Temple of the Sun. Q can be enjoyed at Q can be enjoyed at day and night. Ride is set tonight with camera time machine. Boom! Okay, very good that it's being controlled with the day-night sequencer. Let's take a closer look. So here we are. The guests are piling in. I have opened it up to the public. Said we want to enjoy the queue at nighttime. There's a look at it. So I do want to have a little discussion while we go enjoy this queue. Somebody sent me a message asking about why ride spotlights. Hold on, I gotta turn this down so I can think. Yeah, somebody uh, sent me a message asking why ride spotlights aren't featured nearly as often as coasters and parks. And the simple answer for that is we don't have that many of them or that many good ones at that. Now, if I were to uh, quickly take a look at the submission form, we have a total of 16 rides. <laughs> That's it. So if I featured all 16 of them right now, there would no longer be any more ride spotlights ever. That's how little of them we have. So yeah, if I featured all 16, there would be no need for ride spotlights in the future. So the, yeah, the simple answer to that is that we just don't get a lot of submissions. Um, and with that, uh, we rank all of the creations that come in. We give them a, a star rating based off of the screenshots. So sometimes if we rated it out of five stars, if we rated something that's like a two star, it might surprise us and end up being a three or four star. But based off of your screenshots, wow, this is a beautiful cue. Based off your screenshots of what you provided for us to look at, we kind of rated on an excitement level. How excited are we to view this creation? And, uh, you know, usually if it's a four or five star, it gets featured right away. Currently, right now, everything in the submission box, all 16 submissions, are between one to three stars. So anything that's four and five immediately gets featured because it's rare that we get a good ride spotlight. So that being said that, if you feel like you s can submit something that's a four or five excitement level of a good ride, pretty much gets featured. <laughs> but we don't get that many ride spotlights. That's the moral of the story. And uh, if I were to feature the rest of them, I'm sure they wouldn't be the most exciting episodes anyways, because a lot of them are just two star excitement factors. But here today, Dwayne Alker came through with a really good one that I thought looked really awesome. And I did rate this a four star. Um, it's rare that I give something a five. It has to just blow my mind with the screenshots anyways that's my rant that's the queue here's the ride we're looking at a uh track ride a ro remotion robotic arm there's a look at all the stats if you want to see them i'm gonna get the volume back up and we're gonna get on this one here i think we're gonna sit in the middle seat and here we go all right so i could just sit back hands off uh because the remotion arm is going to control it for us so a bit of a tomb raider vibe on this one Ooh, parabolic screen with a video. That's super cool. Love it. Pops out into a similar scene to what we just saw in the video. Really well done. And yeah, this is super immersive. It's really difficult to get a dramatic ride in under 4,000 pieces. That's very impressive so far. Because remember, this is a blueprint. You can put this in your park. 
Wow. The perspective is phenomenal. Oh! Ah, this is sick. Whoa! God, the video integration is such a good idea. I've seen Zayfor do that a few times. Hey, I like the spider dropping from his mouth. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow, that's super cool. Oh! <laughs> I did not expect that. Oh, the booby traps. Get out of here. There's so much detail in here for 4,000 pieces. Great control over the cameras so far. It's not just one panning camera. It's all over the place. It's dynamic. It's looking up and down while moving forward. Why did the music stop? Oh, that's the end of the ride. Oh, wow. Surprising. I mean, uh, not easy to get that much crammed into one blueprint like i said that is a 4000 piece placeable blueprint so i mean i while it kind of was anticlimactic and just ended it's understandable i was but i kind of my, in my back of my mind I, was, I was thought we were like halfway through it but yeah you ran out of parts there's no there's nothing more you can do there uh <clears throat> super impressive though i i do feel like it ended kind of anticlimactic it would have been nice like if this was a big treasure room or something but again you ran out of parts it's not an easy thing to manage. I certainly love the fact that you got this into a blueprint so people can place it in their parks. Um, you utilize the parabolic screens to your advantage to kind of increase the duration of the ride because without that, it would have felt a little bit anticlimactic, but you also use it as a scene transition because it's moving around the parabolic screen and transitioning into a new um, area. And uh, yeah, it really is a great way of giving that ride extension between scenes so if you look at it now that we're behind the scenes it's a little bit bare but because you're always facing the camera at what you want the viewer to be seeing it was just jam-packed the entire way through super impressive in my opinion uh really well done Dwayne Dwayne Elker I love the exterior as well touch of realism around uh it looks beautiful from the front and at night the lighting's great signs lovely custom sign yeah Really well done. A little bit of a shorter episode here today, but again, I wanted to get that information out to you guys that if you're wondering where the ride spotlights are, I'm wondering the same thing. <laughs> Like, we only have 16, which is insanely low. I think we have like 90 parks. We have, I don't know, probably a thousand coasters. <laughs> Um, but rides, yeah, 16. That's what we're sitting at. So if you have a, a top quality four or five star ride spotlight that you think is superb, get it in because we're, we, we don't feature rides that often. I, I don't think, I'm just going to say this, I don't think we'll ever hit ride spotlight 200 based off of the fact that we featured 100 so far and there's only 16 in the bin. Unless 100 more submissions come in, you know, ride spotlight will probably peter out and uh, probably never make it past 150. You know, I'll continue to feature the good ones as they come in, but we only get a handful of them that are good every few months, you know? So... It's, uh, I don't think it'll ever make it to 200, but we're definitely keep going on the parks. Park Spotlight should easily make it up there, and, uh, coasters, no problem, will get past 1,000. So, that's why there's so many park spotlights and ride, uh, coaster spotlights. Uh, less, less so on the parks. It's a, it's a lot of work for us. It's a lot of work for the creators. Uh, building a park sometimes takes people a year or two. So while we have like probably another hundred or so in the bin, it's not, if I featured them all in, you know, three months, one park a day, we wouldn't see another park for months and months and months on end. So we try to separate them try to spread them out and we do the maximum of two three parks a week if that so we just really want to try to spread them out so we have year-long parks to spotlight on the weekends so a little bit of an explanation there for you guys so once again get your rides in if you got something good sitting around and we'll get that featured for Dwayne Elkert my feedback here for you I mean I don't really have feedback because I think it was great in a blueprint but if you do something like this don't be hesitant to 
build it is a, a park file because you can continue with your piece count. You can get your story completed, start to finish. You can really push those details. And I think it makes for a better ride experience, but I understand your thought process. And I want to share this with the community. I want you to be able to place this in your park. And I think it accomplished that very well. So I think it's a superb creation for what it is in a blueprint form. And I'm actually surprised you pulled that off with so much detail uh, and excitement. So really good job. High praise from me here today, Dwayne Alcar. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. And that's going to do it for me in today's video, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye now.